everyone. Welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today I'm going to be bringing you five DIYs from Dollar Tree items and making them into modern farmhouse with a little bit of boho flavor to them. If you're not subscribed already, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. I wanted to say thank you for all the love and encouragement you guys have been showing me. And we just hit 50,000 a couple of weeks ago. But I just wanted to say thank you, and I couldn't have done it without all of you. So without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we'll be using this planter pot, and it's actually one of the larger ones that Dollar Tree carries. And then some roving yarn that I got from Walmart for $17. And then some regular nautical rope, and I actually got this from Walmart, but they have it at Dollar Tree. Some one inch wood beads, and I get these from Amazon for $13.99 and you get $200. And I'll have this linked in the description box below. A cotton mop, some jute twine, my glue gun and scissors, and then some white spray paint. And this is Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover spray paint. And so the first thing we're gonna do is paint our pot and I just took it outside to the backyard in our painting area and just gave it two coats of the white. Now I strongly dislike the smell of spray paint, but in this case it's gonna be covered by some rope and so I was thinking that it might mask the smell, so I just went ahead and did it because it was a lot quicker. So I just finished spray painting this and then while that's drying I'm going to take a few strands of my cotton mop head and just cut those off and I'm going to make this into a tassel. So all I did was took a piece of jute twine and got it right around the middle area and tied a knot in that and then I'm going to tie another piece of jute twine around about a quarter of the way down just to make it look like a tassel and then wrap it around a few times and make another knot. And then to give it a little more texture, I took each of the strands and just took them apart. And they were really crookedy and cute, and so I just thought that gave it a little more character. So then I took a needle and threaded both pieces of the jute twine through it. And then I'm going to take four beads and thread those onto the jute twine. And then after I get to the top on the fourth bead, I'm going to go back in through the same hole and then tie it around the third and fourth beads, leaving a loop at the top of the tassel. So then I started wrapping my pot with the nautical rope first and I used my hot glue on the first three rows all the way around so that it would be nice and sturdy and wouldn't slip off anywhere. And so a lot of people ask me about my finger protectors and I will have these linked in the description box below. But I also had a viewer tell me that she saw some in the sewing department at Walmart and they were the same kind. I think there were only about three of them in that package but you might want to check that out. They also have some in the stationary area and those, however, do not have the little vent holes. So just some additional information, but I will have those linked in the description box below in case you're interested in those, as well as my stand-up glue gun. I get a lot of questions about this as well. So after I pass the first three rows, I start gluing only at about every quarter or halfway around the pot. And I'm going to go up about a third of the way up the pot, and then I'm going to change over to my roving yarn. And roving yarn is just yarn that has not yet been spun. And I learned that from a viewer too. I'm always getting taught things that I didn't know from my viewers, and I really appreciate it. 
So with the roving yarn, I'm just gonna twist it because I want it to be a little thinner and a little tighter in the winding so it's closer to the size of the nautical rope. And anytime you're working with this roving yarn, it seems like it sheds a lot and so it kind of gets in your way and can get your glue gun kind of stopped up and stringy and so it's kind of a mess but you just have to muscle through it and get the job done because I think it really is worth the look and how soft it is. I, I just love the roving yarn. And then once I go around a few times, I'm gonna start up again with the nautical rope and finish it off. So right before I was finished, I fed my tassel through the top area and then passed over with my rope and then that'll keep that in place and then I'll cut off the loop once I get it all secured. So to keep things clean and finished, I always like to finish my wrapping in the back of whatever project I'm doing. And then I cut my rope at an angle going from the bottom out toward the top so that it was kind of at a point and you would only see the longer part at the top. That totally doesn't make sense, but maybe you saw what I meant. <laughs> So now I'm gonna take some wire and then cut those. This was all the wire I had that was this strong. And this is the kind you get from Dollar Tree that makes your hands dirty. I don't know what that is or what that's about, but my hands were already dirty, so I just went ahead and went with it. But I'm gonna feed these through to make handles and I stuck it through the top layer of the rope and then fed on eight beads on each side and then used my pliers to wrap that around and get those handles in place and secure. And here it is all done and I think it turned out super cute and you could take a lighter and get rid of all of the edges or the flyaways that the nautical rope has but I really liked the texture of this and I love all the different layers of touchy goodness on here and so I hope you guys like this. So for our next project, we're gonna be using three of these metal paper towel holders, a pizza pan, some Waverly White chalk paint, and some wax in antique, my glue gun, some E6000, and it would be really helpful if you had a Michael J too. 
So what I'm gonna do is make a little table or plant stand out of this. And I had seen this a while back and I couldn't figure out who it was that I saw it from, but I went back and searched it and I think it was J Money DIY. So I'll have her video linked below so you can see how she did it. But all I did was put them all three on the bottom of my pizza pan. And then I needed to cut some areas and I couldn't do it myself. I Thought I could, but turns out I had to have Michael J. do it. <gasps> really? Wyman. <laughs> okay, what's up? <laughs> now cut the other side, right? Wait, do you see a mark? Yeah, I right see there. a mark. Is that perfect? Yeah. Not perfect, but. Nice. He's so strong. <laughs> Anyway, he was out working on a fence outside, so that's why he was in the garage and looked the way he did. <laughs> so now I'm going to take a Sharpie and mark where I'm going to put my paper towel holders. And then I'm going to pull those out and stretch them so that they are kind of leaning out. And I want to get them all pretty much at the same angle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I would like it to sit straight and not teeter-totter. So I got those all pulled out and then I'm going to use my E6000 and my hot glue gun to put those in place. And so I was told by a viewer that it's better if you use your E6000 and kind of stagger those lines and then put the hot glue in between so that it's not mixing with the E6000. So I did that and then I'm going to put those all in place. And I did end up burning myself because it dripped onto my hand, but that's okay. That's what these tests are for. So after I got them all put on there, I'm going to take it outside and spray paint that and including all the glue and everything because you're not going to look under there anyway, but it would be nice to kind of dress it up and cover it up a little bit. So once it was all dry, I decided to go in with some tassels that I had from, I think it was a pillow or something, we can't remember what, but I pulled it apart and you guys know I don't throw anything away. So I just hot glued that to the bottom because I didn't want the gimp to really show. I just wanted the tassels because I'm gonna do a treatment around the rim of the pizza pan. So I just hot glued that all the way around and then I'm gonna go back in with my Waverly Wax in Antique and I'm gonna paint the outside edge and try and make that look like a wood finish. So I wanted this wood treatment to look like that really light faded whitewashed wood that you see with so many white items. And so I first brushed it on there and then would wipe it off with a paper towel. And I didn't like going over the edge. I didn't want it to be on the edge. So I started using my sponge brush and just dabbing it on and then wiping it with the side of the brush. And then that gave it some more streaks and I think it turned out really good and looks like wood.
And here it is all finished and I think it turned out super adorable. I love the look of the paper towel holders and they kind of resemble the hairpin legs that you see in a lot of farmhouse decor. And I love the soft edge of the light wood or faux wood, I guess. And you could use this as a plant stand or a riser or even in a corner where you don't have anything and you need to add something next to a cabinet or something or even next to a side table just to give it different levels. But I think it turned out super cute. I wanted to tell you too, I have some winners from some drawings that I've had um, from a month or so ago so I'll be letting you guys know who the winners are at the end of this video so for our next project we're gonna be using a pizza pan some skewers a whole bunch of them and in different sizes some of them are even dowels that I've picked up somewhere some foam core poster board and a Zacto knife some paper and pencil and then some Waverly white chalk paint and some wax in antique our glue gun, scissors, wire cutters, and a chenille stem. And so the first thing we're gonna do is paint the pizza pan with our white chalk paint. And I like to just dump it out and then start spreading it from there. And I ended up giving this two coats. Most of it's gonna be covered, but I wanted to get a nice even coat just the same. So while my paint's drying, I'm going to take my pencil and draw a dove and make it to the size that I want. And so I will have a link in the description box below for a PDF that my brother made for me so that you guys can print this out if you want to do this project. And so after I draw it out, I'm gonna fold it in half so that I can get the wings to be the same size. And then I'll open it back up to cut out the rest of his little head. And so after I cut this all out, I'm gonna put it on my foam core poster board and use my Zacto knife to cut it out of the poster board. And if you're not familiar with what Pentecost is, that is the day we celebrate the birthday of the church. It's 50 days after the resurrection. And so a lot of people don't realize that Jesus walked the earth for 40 days after he came back to life. And he was getting his church together and figuring everything out, explaining to the apostles and other disciples what their roles would be and what to do, what the guidelines were, just basically how he wanted everything run. And so after 40 days of being on earth, then he ascended into heaven. 10 days after that, so that would be 40 plus 10, which would equal 50 days, that's why it's called Pentecost, as in Penta equals five. On that 50th day, he sent down the Holy Spirit to help the apostles and disciples with everything. That's also when there were the different languages that they could understand and speak so that he could spread the gospel to all parts of the world. And the dove has always been a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So that's why I'm doing this project. So I started using a larger utility knife, but I decided to use this smaller Zacto knife or utility knife. This is also from Dollar Tree, but it was a lot easier because it has a little place for your finger. So you can kind of hold it as a pencil and you have more control. So once I was cutting through and I'm cutting on a self-healing mat, I picked it up and then made the blade go all the way through into the back because sometimes you'll cut through the foam, but the back paper still sticks. So you have to just go all the way through and then it will eventually come apart. Thank you. 
So now I'm going to cut out the little tail feathers and I just went through and made different little scallops to resemble feathers and on the PDF it just goes straight across so you'll just have to make your own little ups and downs and you're just going through the same process of cutting out the foam and then the paper. So then I took some fine grit sandpaper and just went along the edges to get rid of any rough areas that were on there. You could actually use an emery board for the little corners and the nooks and crannies. I got that from a viewer as well. And so then I'm going to paint it with my white chalk paint just to give it kind of a more matte finish and make this look a little more like wood. And then I'll go back in and take my antique wax and hit the sides just very lightly just so that it gives it some distressed looking highlights and give it an even more wood look. So now I'm going to take my dowels and my skewers and I'm going to break those down into different sizes. I ended up using my wire cutters and my shears to give them a more even edge and cleaner at the end so that I could use either side when I'm putting them on my pizza pan. But first I'm going to paint them all and I used my antique wax and I just kind of gathered them all together because I want them to be different shades and different sizes and I didn't want any of the points of the skewers in there so I just cut those off as well. So now I'm going to start attaching them to my pizza pan using my hot glue and this has the detail tip so it was easier to get the glue onto the skewers because they're so skinny and so I just laid them out and I want this layer to be all flat on the pizza pan and then I'm just going to keep building and going in a circle and make them different lengths and different colors.
So once I got my first layer down, I went back in and started a second layer on top of those that were already down. So I just took my hot glue and stuck those on top of that first layer. And so it's rising and eventually I will have some that will go over the edge of the pizza pan. And then I'm also gonna add some lighter colored skewers that weren't painted at all. And as I get closer to the top, I'm gonna use shorter sticks, kind of like a sunburst. And so I'll just keep going and then everything's going to be covered by the dove so you won't see any of the hot glue mess. So now I'm going to take a piece of chenille stem and fold it in half and twist it at the bottom. Make sure you get it right at the top of the dove so that it hangs straight. And then just using some hot glue and a little piece of fabric, I covered that up and that's going to be my hanger. And here's how this turned out. I'm absolutely in love with this and I get to commemorate the season of Pentecost. And I think it looks really pretty too. And so if you don't wanna use the dove, you could actually also put a round Dollar Tree mirror in the middle of this, and that would hide all the hot glue and you could use that year round. But I love this and I hope you guys like it too. For our next project, I'm gonna be using three embroidery hoops and I got a whole bunch from my friends, so I've been trying to find ways to use them. A little pencil holder from the school supply area. And then I used this frame in another DIY and so I had the middle part that I had taken off, so we're gonna use just that. Some Waverly wax in antique and then a bunch of random greenery and stems that I had on hand and then some floral moss in the green color, some jute twine, and my hot glue gun and scissors. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is get that little block of wood off of the back of the round piece. And I heated up the glue with my heat tool and then just pulled it off and it takes the balsa wood off of it so I just used my Cricut spatula to take the rest of it off. And then I'm gonna paint that with the wax in antique and get that to be the same color because we're gonna be painting our embroidery hoops in that same antique wax. And so then on the other side, I'm going to scuff it up and then I'll paint that other side of the medallion black so that you can't see it when it's put together. So now I'm gonna take my embroidery hoops and feed one into the other and then take the third one and put that in between the two of those. And then I wanna make sure that they're all equidistant apart and they all meet at the same point on the top and the bottom. And then I'll take a pencil to mark where that is and then my hot glue gun will fit right under the little area 
where I need to glue it and you've just lift it and it'll have enough give that you can lift it just enough to get the tip of that hot glue gun in there and get those secured. So now I'm going to take my wood piece and I'm going to have the black facing up to match my pencil holder and then the antique wax facing down to match the orb itself and I'll just take some hot glue and get that put in place. Then I'm going to take some jute twine and wrap it around the top and just kind of go in and out just to give it some more security because I want this to be able to hang but you can also as you'll see later set this on a countertop or a mantle but this is how it will hang by using the jute twine that I'll wrap around and leave long so that it can hang and you can see I've already got the pencil holder glued into it and I didn't like that it was just hanging on one piece of the embroidery hoop so I'm going to go back and secure it with some more jute twine by feeding a needle and jute through the little openings in the mesh of the pencil holder and then tie those to the embroidery hoops at four different corners. So once that was all secured, then I'm going to add my green moss in the pencil holder and my greenery. And then I'm going to take some extra pieces and glue those around the base so that you can't see that jute twine. And here's how it turned out and I'm just hanging it from my fireplace mantle just so that you can see it but I think it turned out super sweet and very rustic farmhouse modern farmhouse and you can get embroidery hoops pretty much anywhere especially thrift stores but I do know that Walmart carries them for pretty cheap or you could have a friend that gives you a whole bunch when she's cleaning out her craft room. So anyway, I think it is super adorable and I hope you guys like it.
So for our final project, I'm going to be using two of these metal cooling racks, some cable ties, and they have the long ones and the short ones, but I couldn't find the package for the short ones, five of these mini little terracotta pots, some random foam and some larger foam, and some more scrap greenery. I always stock up whenever I find this at Dollar Tree, and then some jute twine, some white and black chalk paint, and then some more of the wax in antique. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, this was a dumb idea. I didn't have any black spray paint, but I should have waited to do this project, but I really wanted to get this done. And so I took my chalk paint and painted this by hand. I do not recommend this. This was no bueno. This is a job that needed to be spray painted. So if you have black spray paint, that would be the time to use it, regardless of the smell. So now I'm gonna take my terracotta pots and I'm just gonna paint those white. And I love painting terracotta for some reason because it goes on so smooth and pretty and it dries almost instantly because I think the terracotta kind of sucks in the moisture. But I'm just gonna paint all five of my pots and then I'm gonna take my Waverly Wax in Antique and I'm gonna make a little line at the bottom of the pots because I want a little wood looking rim at the bottom. So originally I used a pencil to mark where I wanted to make that rim. And then on the second try, I didn't even use a pencil mark. It was just such a small area and I was able to just drag my brush all the way around. Every time I would put my bristles down though, it would make a line. So what I ended up doing was just making sure that where I started and finished was one long consecutive line and that it would finish in the back. So the line itself would be only in the back. So now I'm gonna take the small scraps of floral foam and hot glue those to the bottom of the pots just to give it some height. And then I'm gonna take some jute twine and put a dot of glue in the back and I find the back by looking for that line from the paint at the bottom rim. And then I'm gonna wrap it around the top part of the planter and go around about three or four times and then tie it in a knot at the back because that's what we're gonna to use to tie it to our thingy ma jig So to put our thingy-majig together, we're gonna take the two cooling racks and attach them at the top using cable ties. And you wanna make sure that the little feet of the cooling racks are both facing inside, so there won't be any lumps on the outside. 
So I just fed those through the top part of the racks and tied those and pulled them tight. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess and I wanna make sure that they are the same distance apart on both sides. And then I went back in with my black paint and touched that up. And so now I'm gonna use a piece from a trellis that I used in a different DIY. And I just took the pieces that were in the middle because they were about the right size and using my shears, I cut those apart and then made little hooks at each of the ends with my needle nose pliers. And then I'm gonna place those on each of the sides to keep the rack from spreading open. So now I'm gonna tie my little pots to the rack and I just tied a knot and cut off the excess. And since I only had five, I just staggered them up and down and I think it was the perfect amount of pots anyway. So I had used one of them in a different DIY. So instead of using moss for this one, I decided to use some more floral foam and I cut those all out in the shape of a circle and whittled it down to get to the right size. And I had seen this on Liz Fenwick's channel and I'm sure everybody knows who Liz Fenwick is, but she had made it look like dirt one time when she was potting a fake plant. And so she took her floral foam and painted it black and then stuck it in the pot and then put the plants inside of that. And it really does look like dirt. So I highly recommend her channel. You will love her. I'll have her channel linked down below as well. And here's how this one turned out. I think this might be my favorite. I absolutely love it. Let me know which one is your favorite. But when you put all of these together in one vignette, it's so pretty with all the woods and coordinating white and greenery. And so you wouldn't put them all together in one display, but putting them in random places throughout can really make the difference in your home decor. But I really love this and I hope you guys like it too. So I wanted to tell you who the winners were for the Eco Buddies cutlery set as well as a set of plates that they sent me. And so for the cutlery set, the winner was Vicky Noeski or Noeski or N-O-E-S-K-E. 
And for the plates, it was Luann Barlett or Bartlett. Barlett, I think. Anyway, if that's one of you two girls, comment and let me know that you saw this so that I can get these sent out to you guys ASAP. We're also going to be giving away another Cricut cutting machine as a way of saying thank you for hitting 50,000 subscribers. I can't even believe that. But make sure you keep watching and make sure that you're subscribed so that you can have a chance to win that very soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up comment and let me know what you think again thank you so much for all of the love and support i hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye <laughs>